But if you're interested in specific bills, I'll get them to you. But none of the, long story short, most of them did not pass. And the reason was because of the budget. Um, I think our biggest focus this year was you know, two things, which is getting out of town with a balanced budget, which is always a challenge in Tallahassee sometimes. Uh, sometimes I wish we had Jared. He looks like he's pretty good on the books. We have to hire you up. <laughs> but um, the next thing was trying to create jobs and stimulate the economy. We did some things. Uh, we have some growth management inequities in the state and problems. We tried to, to change some of the growth management laws to make them a little bit more friendly, not incentivize people to do urban sprawl. You know, there's, there's some things that we, we were trying to do to reduce the amount of infrastructure costs that people would, have to pay to develop, people would have to pay to develop. And on top of that, another thing that was very business friendly that we think will help small businesses, particularly for those of you who own a small business, is our workers' comp laws. There was a workers' comp law that passed five years ago that reduced rates by 60%. And I see my friends from the firefighters here. They're not in love with this bill. That's okay. But it, it is good for businesses. And, and truthfully, it, 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 we, there, was a, there was a Supreme Court case that basically threw out the statute and said the attorney's fees were messed up and we had to come back and fix it. So we fixed it. Had we not fixed it, workers' comp rates, we think, would have gone right back up to where they were. And the last thing that businesses need is something coming out of their pocket. So we, we tried to address that. In regards to the TRO price issue, um, I'll give you the latest I know. There, there are, and excuse my term on this, but I, I call them the citizens for insanity. And I'm sure they're nice people, and I'm sure that they're not always this wrong, but uh, on this one, they are just flat wrong. I don't have any problem with protecting the environment. I don't have any problem with making sure that we develop in a manner that is, that is, that is correct and looking out for our, our, our nature and our, and, 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 and our surroundings. But when you have an opportunity to create 1,600 jobs Okay, at an average of $65,000 a job, we should be bending over backwards to make that happen. Bending over backwards. I think the deal will happen. There's some small snags about the cost of the road, which you guys may have read about in the paper today. There's a road that the county's responsible for building. If they thought it was going to cost them $8 million to build it, now they're finding out that it cost them $16 million to build it. Small problem. So we have some hurdles to overcome, but I think the state is committed. We're putting up almost $15 million in incentives to bring them here. Uh, the county's committed, so we're going to do what we have to do. And it's, it, for this for this 54 corridor, I cannot stress how important it is that we land that. Because what's going to happen is, let's say T row price doesn't go through, the next T row price, and there'll be another one that comes shopping in, in Tasco County and looking at this area, they're going to go to T row price and say, how did it go for you? And they're going to say, well, we got the citizens for sanity to file a bunch of lawsuits, and then we had this problem with the county and that problem with the state. You know, that Tasco County is just not a very friendly place to deal with, and they're going to end up scaring people off. So. This is kind of our test trial here to do a really good job and show people that we're ready for, for real job creation, create jobs that, that pay people a wage that they can live off of and can, and can raise families off of. So it's a great opportunity, and I'm really hoping that we don't screw it up, frankly. So um, keep your fingers crossed. But that's, that's kind of where we are on that. Um, oh, there's one more bill I think that's very important. Some of you guys are familiar. I don't know if you are or not. There's this, there's this term that's used by the property appraiser's office called the presumption of correctness. I don't know if anybody has ever challenged, okay, now there's more and more people doing it now, challenge the property taxes that are levied against your home. You say, wait a minute, you know, property appraiser says my home is worth X and I gotta pay this much in taxes. My home's not worth that much. Gosh, you know, that, that, that can't be right. You can challenge and there's a, form, there's a format that of which you can challenge. But here's what happens. If there's a tie, Okay, and you go before what they call the Value Adjustment Board, and the Value Adjustment Board says, look, it's just too close to call. <clears throat> they give the presumption of correctness to the property appraiser, which basically means in baseball there's a, thing, there's a, there's a term, tie goes to the runner, right? That's the way it works in baseball. Well, apparently in government, the tie goes to government. We fixed that this year. We fixed that. The tie should never go to the government. If there's ever a doubt about who's right, it should always go to the citizen. And so what we did was we eliminated the presumption of correctness and we made sure that they have to have overwhelming evidence to show that your property is worth what they say it's worth, okay, in order for them to tax you based off of that value. So that was, it doesn't sound like a big deal. It's, it's, it's big for a lot of homeowners who are stressed right now, have a hard time paying their bills. It's a really big deal for businesses who've seen their property taxes go up through the river too. Um, I think that's a pretty good overview of what we've, did, what we've done. It was the most challenging, this past four months was the most challenging four months of my life. We had a special session in January. We had um, a speaker of the house that had to step down, uh, later to be indicted a few months later, which was a very challenging uh, time for us. A lot of us had to kind of step up and, and try to fill that void. It was a really tough year, but, but truthfully, given the circumstances we were faced with, I felt like we had a pretty successful year. And um, 
you know, things aren't, things don't look rosy going forward. I think we're still in for another nine to 12 months, a very tough time, but this is Florida and growth will come back and businesses will come down here and we have the beaches and we have a beautiful warm weather and this is a great place to live. In Pasco County, just so you know, the, um, there, there's a, a state agency that every year predicts what they think the growth rates are gonna be over the next five years. Pasco was one of five counties that they predict to have more than 5% growth, I'm sorry, 10% growth over the next five years. They think Pasco County is gonna grow more than 10%. So we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. We're in a slump here, we're getting ready to come out of it. But um, you guys <clears throat> are on the front lines, you really are. And I appreciate the service you do because you don't get a whole lot of uh, accolades for it. You probably get yelled at by some of your members when you come knocking on their door asking for money uh, to pay their bills, but you really are the front lines and I appreciate you for that. I've got business cards with me too after I do Q&A. If anybody has any questions further or just wants to get on our email list, some of you probably are already on it. And uh, we'd like to add the rest of you to that, make sure you're up to speed with what we're doing. So with that, I'm willing to ask, answer questions and you've got one, yes sir. Yeah, will uh, House and Finance uh, Committee, Finance and Tax, House Bill 609, they want to tax 7% on our mobile home rents. So if we paid $300 a month on a mobile home rent, we would pay $21 a month for 12 months. I wrote you an email and, you know, opposing this, and I hope this thing never comes up again. It's dead. This, this is a, Terrible uh, tax to put on all the people. It is. Some people file the craziest bills. I don't know where they come up with these ideas. That would be one of them. Um, it did not pass, and it was it was pretty much what we call DOA, which means it's dead on arrival. It's, the minute it pops out of the system, it was gone. Um, that that would be a terrible way to tax folks. Many of them can't afford where they're living anyway. So that that, that won't happen. Yes, sir. Can you mention a few of the things that the state found to make up that shortfall in the income? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, his, his